Okay, so in this video, we want to consider the operation called the dot product between two vectors. And if I give you vectors u and v, we usually write u dot, and don't be afraid to write a big bold dot, v. So this reads u dot v. And this is a vector operation that takes two vectors and gives you a scalar, a real number. And this is by far, for us, the most important vector operation. And hopefully, it will look vaguely familiar. So suppose we have two vectors, u and v, and r2. So vectors in the plane with two components. How do we compute u dotted with v? What we do is remarkably simple. We do the first component of u, u1, times the first component of v, v1, plus the second component of u, u2, times the second component of v, v2. So look at that. We took the two vectors, and their dot product is simply, we multiply corresponding entries, first with the first, second with the second, and we add them up. Let me repeat that. We multiply corresponding entries, and we add them up. Doesn't that vaguely sound like matrix multiplication? How do we multiply a row times a column? Well, we multiply corresponding entries, and we add them up. And this is what the dot product is. So you'll see right now, this is a purely algebraic operation on vectors. And of course, if you look here, the result is a real number. So when you dot two vectors, the end result is a real number. What's neat is this is really just matrix multiplication. Multiply corresponding entries and add them up. We'll look at this first ge algebraically and then we'll realize that there is a really subtle but deep geometric meaning that's hiding in this simple looking algebraic operation. And so every time that you were multiplying matrices, geometry took place, you just were not aware of it. So of course, if you have vectors in R3 with three components, it's naturally the same thing. You will find u dotted with v by doing the first entry of u times the first entry of v, so u1 times v1, plus the second entry of u times the second entry of v, u2 times v2, plus the third entry of u times the third entry of v. Once again, all we did was multiply corresponding entries and add them up. And of course, if we went to our n, which we will do very shortly, well, if you have a vector with n components, u1, u2, u3 up to un, v1, v2, v3 up to vn, the dot product is the same. Because we simply multiply corresponding entries and we add them up. So u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2 plus dot 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 up to un times vn. And of course, we can write this much more concisely using our beloved sigma notation. This is simply the sum over, well, what's changing? It's the index. 1 with 1, 2 with 2, 3 with 3, up to n with n. So it's uk times vk, the kth component of u times the kth component of v, and k begins with 1, with the first component, and ends with n, the last component. And this is your dot product. So really, really simple algebraic operation, which is basically matrix multiplication. Think of when you do u dot v, you're really just doing column or row u times column v. It's worth noticing one small observation. What if we thought of these as column matrices? And you'll see we'll relate this to matrix multiplication involving the transpose. And this really isn't a side, but for now, but later on, it will be useful. So if I view now my vectors in Rn as column matrices, so u1, u2, un, and v1, well, v is a, also a column matrix, so v1, v2, 
Vn. The question is, how can we relate their dot product with matrix multiplication and using the transpose operation? Well, it's actually quite simple, right? Because we know that this is the result of a row times a column matrix. So if we write u dotted with v, well, we know this will be u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2 up to vn times vn. Well, we can simply do u transposed times v. No longer a dot product. u dot v is the same as the transpose of vector u times vector v, because now if you transpose vector u, which is a column matrix, this will become a row matrix. u1, u2, up to un, times the column matrix v, v1, v2, up to vn, and of course, when you do a row times a column, you get a single real number. And, well, how do we multiply a row times a column matrix? We multiply corresponding entries and we add them up. So U1 V1 plus U2 V2 up to UN VN. So if you think of the vectors as column vectors, as column matrices, when you dot u and v, that's just the same as the transpose of u times vector v. Now you can view the dot product as a simple matrix multiplication between a row matrix and a column matrix. It is worth noting that you would get the same result if you did v transpose times u. And that's how you can connect the dot product with basic transpose operation and basic matrix multiplication. But let's go back to just R2 and R3. The question is, every time we have a new algebraic operation, what are the properties of this operation? So let's look at basic properties of the dot product. And you will see that what's nice about this is the dot product, even though it is a vector operation, behaves just like scalar multiplication. It has all of the same properties. The first property is the intimate connection between the dot product and the norm of a vector squared. If your vector u has, say, two components, I will let you check that the same is true with uh, three components. Sorry about that. What if we look at the norm of u? The norm of u, if you recall by Pythagoras' theorem, is the square root of the sum of the entries squared. So it is the root of u1 squared plus u2 squared. So what if you take the norm of u squared? Well, quite naturally, the norm of u squared, this will just cancel the square root, and you're left with the sum of the entries squared. Let's now dot u with itself. What if you perform u dotted with u? Well, this is the vector u1, u2, dotted with itself, u1, u2. And we dot two vectors by multiplying their corresponding entries and adding them up. So u1 times u1, that's u1 squared, plus u2 times u2, that's u2 squared. But look at that. If you add the squares of the individual entries of the vector, that's just the norm of the vector squared. And you can verify easily the same equality holds for vectors with three components, four components, or a million components. And this is a really, really useful relationship. The norm of a vector squared is just a vector dotted with itself. And this is so useful because, as we'll see, the norm itself is quite complicated because of the square root. It makes the norm rather unpleasant. 
but sometimes you can go from a norm of a vector to the norm squared, and you can ditch the norm squared for the dot product with the vector and itself. And the reason why this is actually a better form is, as you'll see in a second, the dot product has so many nice properties that it will make our life very often much simpler. So here are the properties of the dot product, and the key is to keep in mind that even though the dot product is a vector operation, it behaves just like regular scalar multiplication. All these properties, except for one, I will leave the proofs to you, and I'll prove one and show you that there really are uh, just straightforward verifications. So the first property, as you can see here, is if you dot a vector with itself, you get the norm of the vector squared. Really, really important property. What if we have now more vectors? What if we take vectors u, v, and w? And what if these vectors have the same number of components? So they all have, say, two components, or three components, or n components, because you can only dot two vectors if they have the same number of components, because we multiply corresponding entries and we add them up. So they have to have the same number of components. But as soon as they do, and take k to be a real number. What are the properties of this vector operation? Well, the first property is that it commutes. If you do u dot v, that's the same as v dot u. One nice property is if you do k times u dot v, because u dot v is just a scalar, that's the same as doing vector ku dotted with vector v, and that's also the same as doing vector u dotted with vector kv. Another property, if you do u dotted with v plus or minus w, you can distribute the dot product over the sum or difference of these two vectors. So you can treat this vector u, v, and w as if they were real numbers, and as if the dot product was just basic scalar multiplication. So this will be u dotted with v plus or minus u dotted with w. The same holds if you do this, u plus or minus v dotted with w. You can also distribute, this will be u dotted with w plus or minus u, uh, v dotted with w. And all these properties, if you think of u, v, as real, and w as real numbers, if you think of the dot product as regular multiplication, all of these are familiar properties of addition and multiplication. And that's why the dot product is such a great operation, because it really behaves quite simply. Let's prove this one with an addition, and we'll assume that the vectors have only two components. The proof with three components is the same, except you just it takes a little bit more space. And you'll see that all these proofs are direct calculations. You'll start with the left-hand side, expand, and you'll get the right-hand side. So suppose that our vectors have two components. So suppose u is given by u1, u2. V is given by V1, V2, and W given by W1, W2. Let's compute the left-hand side with, take the plus with the minus at all. Well, let's take the minus. It's actually a little, quote-unquote, more difficult than the negative sign. Let's take the negative. So let's start with U dotted with V minus w. Well, what's vector u? Given by u1, u2, dotted with vector v minus w. Well, let's subtract. We'll get the first coordinate is v1 minus w1. 
the second coordinate will be v2 minus w2. We cannot dot both vectors because when we dot vectors, we multiply corresponding entries. So u1 times v1 minus w1 plus u2 times v2 minus w2. Of course, now we can expand, and this is simply u1 v1 minus u1 w1 plus u2 v2 minus u2 w2. Combine the positives with the positives and the negatives with the negatives. What are we going to have? Well, u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2. Factor from both of these a negative sign, and you'll have minus u1 w1 plus u2 w2. And if you notice, u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2, that's just u dot v. And u1 times w1 plus u2 times w2, that's just u dot w. So in the end, of course, we're left with quite simply u dot v minus u dot w. And as claimed, u dotted with v minus w is u dot v minus u dot w. And that's it. We're done. So you can see the proof is very straightforward, but also very boring. It's just direct calculation. Expand the left-hand side, rearrange until you get the right-hand side. And all of the other properties can be proved in the exact same fashion. So I will leave the proof up to you. So algebraically, that's the end of the dot product. You dot two vectors by multiplying their corresponding entries and adding them up. The relation between the dot product and the norm is that if you dot a vector with itself, it's the norm of the vector squared. And we have these four properties of the dot product. And the key to keep in mind is, even though it is a vector operation, it behaves like regular scalar multiplication. So it's a very simple operation on the surface, an algebraic operation, which is basically just matrix multiplication. The question is, is there some geometry going on in this operation? And the answer is yes. And this will be the topic of our next video. What geometry is hiding inside the simple algebraic operation that is the dot product?